If we don't call out our society failures, we may soon become casualties of the same. Emergency Medical Service, EMS, who needs it and why? Is it not time for millions of Nigerians to demand and receive what is literally life-saving intervention in emerging ways? I've been on this advocate platform in the past to talk about our grossly underfunded shambolic healthcare systems in Nigeria. I advocate for health once again, this time focusing on our emergency medical service or their lack of thereof, costing millions of lives annually. In Nigeria today, a gunshot wound victim or an accident victim, they are not treated um, in many a health facility, whether because of asking for payment or a police report, conditions that have historically seen patients being turned away with unfavorable outcomes, even when EMS or road safety actually brought them there alive. I lost five friends or eight between 50 to 55 years recently for one reason or the other. And some of the deaths definitely could have been prevented if the EMS had worked in Nigeria. One person actually called me from a far away location to say, how do I administer CPR to her while waiting for help to come? How heartbreaking. So as a physician, this hurts deeply. As a politician, of course, can, are we helpless? No because we can actually do something about this, our horrific statistics and our high crude death rates of more than 10,000, which is really, really high. And um, because we cannot make policies um, to change a lot of Nigerians, of course we can. So as we are saying in medicine, prevention is actually not better, but actually cheaper than cure. Yet while during an emergency, how does the healthcare system respond in Nigeria? Who do you call when you fall? In 2009, our Honorable Minister of Health, Professor Babantu de Osuiti Main, um, ON, rest in peace, um, said in a white paper, um, National Strategic Health Development and Plan Framework for Nigeria 2009 to 2015, that he would focus on eight priorities for the health of Nigerians. And these are um, where leadership and governance for health, health service delivery, human resources for health, health financing health information systems, community ownership and participation, partnerships for health development and research for health. Conspicuously, of course, where was EMS? It was not there. Professor Oshoti Mayin, rest in peace, came to Canada in 2010 and I asked him in Ottawa, why no EMS, sir? He agreed, but whose side? As my friend Mrs. O's father would say. In 2020, we are still far, far away from those 20, um, 2009 goals. And amid the global pandemic, we actually saw our health care, um, our health budget in Nigeria slashed. In a, in a meeting of um, the National Council of Health a while ago, ambulance um, operation guidelines and call numbers were decided. Most importantly, a provision was made to the national budget to establish a regular source of funding for EMS in our country, Nigeria. And to that, I say woohoo, because this is a great achievement. But as a special advisor in um, Delta State, where I worked from 2011 uh, to 2012 to the governor, we had EMS established in Delta State. But of course, due to funding, this did not survive to the uh, next government. I'm not really sure what they're doing now. The invaluable need for effective EMS in Nigeria was brought to light when in April 2016, six medical doctors traveling to a conference lost their lives in a bus accident um, somewhere in, in the north. And um, the federal road safety um, arrived to the um, accident um, um, scene and they, they weren't trained, of course, and so they huddled victims into a van and um, subsequently there were even more deaths. Now the victims um, reached a government-owned hospital alive, but many could not receive the treatment because the hospital wasn't prepared for such an emergency. And these were doctors who knew exactly what they needed and some of them just said, just died on the spot. So my advocacy, therefore, is that there must be a federal government law to standardize emergency health care responses in Nigeria and to have uniform national crisis um, call numbers such as 911 as we have here in Canada or 999 in England to allocate an annual budgetary provision for EMS in our country and for all Nigerians no matter what state you're in, and for the EMS responders to be well-trained and to be able to handle emergencies 
effectively stabilize the patient and do the appropriate transfer to the hospital for continuation of care. Mm -hmm. Let us all remember that all life is sacred and let us stop imagining that we are safer because of our wealth or status in society. I mean, a, friend, a friend recently was, um, she did, she, well, she may yet do it on the advocates, so I won't give the game away, but she was talking about how the personal is really political, you know, because until you face a health challenge and you're, no matter how rich you think you are, unless, of course, now the borders are opening, but you find yourself cornered in Nigeria where this health system fails you, then that thing you thought you were doing for yourself quickly becomes a political issue. And this same friend is someone who has always advocated that her problem with the way we approach issues in Nigeria is that each person solves it for themselves. They don't see it as an opportunity to try and solve it for others, you know. So, here is something you're already mentioning, and, and what I picked up from your, your, uh, your presentation was really that we, we can even start by dealing with sensitizing people as to why human life is valuable in the, in the first place, why we really need to prioritize emergency services. Because if you look at the attitude of people, when you just go to any local uh, tertiary uh, hospital, you see the way they treat people, I've been like, treat you like cattle. So they don't even do triage, they don't do that management of which is more important, and that doesn't cost money. It just takes a, a, an attitude by the staff to recognize that human life is valuable. I, I don't blame them to some extent because the way we live here, we just get by. But if it was a system where people actually understood that human life is valuable, even without more money, the attitude of the people there will show you that if somebody walks in here and it's on death's door, the person attending to you is already thinking of how to prioritize you. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, but without the investment, I think we need to start with, that's my own recommendation, sensitizing people as to the value of emergency services in the first place, why you need to save human life. As, as, you know, as a very basic no, minimum. Well, I, 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 I don't think um, you, you can uh, sensitize people where there are no sanctions. Okay. Uh, even if you sensitize people, and then uh, what if they default? Okay. What are the consequences of default? That is where you know, the real issue is. If you sensitize the people, and then you create consequences for action. If a medical doctor, if somebody dies in your hospital, you don't just say, God gives, God has taken. Or, or we tried our best, we're sorry. The board will look at the steps that you took to ensure. And so if you set up um, emergency services and then somebody dies, you know, if, if I know that I will suffer for the death of that person, I will do everything possible. But when there are no consequences, you know, we don't even value lives. Look at our roads. And like you said, Everybody is a local government. You provide everything for yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and so you get there recently, the president's wife ran to Dubai for <laughs> treatment. <laughs> and so somebody that can easily go out. So won't, you know, there won't be consequences because they know they have a leeway out. Mm -hmm. you know, and then we, the people that ought to be demanding, I can run to Seidu and say, bros, my wife is in the hospital. Seidu helps me. I don't know that. It is the government that is supposed to do that. Go, yeah, Seidu, Seidu is playing yeah. government for himself now for me. Mm. And so I leave out government. Mm. So that's where the problem really is. I think, I think we should be a little bit careful because right now, their bodies, you know, they review cases in the hospital. You know, <laughs> people are actually held, they hold people accountable. Mm. My, my wife is a medical mm. doctor and I remember when she was doing her internship at uh, Luth. You know, a lot, One. a lot. No, this is the yeah, practice in Luth. You understand? What, 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 what I want to mention here is, look, there's no doubt that our uh, health uh, care system needs an, a, a complete overhaul. However, you should also understand that, look, it's a priority now. Government is faced with education, faced with... So how do you allocate funds? If you understand the value you know chain... You we carry the no, patients I'm from first I, I, floor I'm trying, to sixth I'm, floor no, I, I, understand, I understand that. If you have a plan, you understand the value chain for that health right. system. You can decide to put your investment in the most important... But you have clarity on what you want to okay. achieve. So you share funds equally. I, I mean, I, I like what Libra said about punishment or sanctions for things. The problem is, is it, is it possible to sanction in a system that is actually broken down anyway? There's, put it this way, the, the, the health system in the country is, is a disaster right now. Uh, Rookie has already said it, that it's shambolic. You can sanction. So how are you going to Where sanction you no, you can. somebody that Seidu, doesn't have equipment, doesn't have anything Seidu going said for something. Them. You start from somewhere, the small that you have put in place, ensure that there are procedures for enforcing it. And mm. so if the, no matter how small, once you start from there, it can, mm. you know, go beyond that. 
I just give an instance. We had to carry somebody from first floor to sixth floor in mm, loot. Yeah. Somebody was paid for ensuring that the lifters are working. Were working Nothing yeah. was done. Yeah. Somebody was paid to supply yes. generators yes. to That's those buildings. As well. It's not working and nothing yeah. was done. That's so, what, so, things as little yeah. That's as what, that. that. That's what I mean by the system is broken down. Okay. So how are you going to sanction anybody? Okay. How will, you know? From top well, to bottom. Well, Rook is right in that what affects one eventually affects all since no man is an island. So after the break, I reference a personal experience that has a public lesson.